for the people in the eastern time zone and Shubhadina for everyone in the western time zone. Uh, this is the weekly Pratipada Arta session. Uh, we will begin now. Harihi Om. Om. Narayanam Suragurum Jagade Kanatham Bhakta Priyam Sakalalo Kanamaskritancha Saigunya Varjitamajam Vipumadya Nisham Vande Bhavagnam Amarasura Siddha Vandyam Narayanaya Paripurna Gunanavaya Vishwoda Yastitilayo Niyate Pradaya Jnana Pradaya Vibhudha Sura Sokya Dukkha Satkarana Yavitataya Namo Namaste Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaivana Rottamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayamudiraye Mahatwa Bharavatwa Cha Mahabharata Muchati Nirukta Masya Yoveda Sarva Papai Pramuchati Yeriha Sitadan Yatra Yeneha Stina Kutrachit Devam Narayanam Natwa Sarva Dosha Vivarjitam Paripurnam Guru Shagita Tham Vakshyamile Shataha Lakshmi Narayanam Natwa Purna Bodhan Guru Napi Kurma Shri Krishna Kitaya Bhashya Dukta Artha Sangraham Harishimu. Uh, welcome everyone. The title of the room says uh, this is the Prati Padartha of the Bhagavad Gita. We look at the word by word breakdown and try to bring some Chandrika, the moonlight, the light upon the worlds. Uh, as spoken by Bhagavan Shri Krishna, the Gita Charya himself, uh, with the firm belief that the best commentary on the Gita is the Gita itself. Uh, we meet every Saturday uh, at 8 o'clock India and for about 90 minutes we look at as many shlokas as possible uh, from culling out the meaning word by word. Uh, and then after 9.30, uh, within, which is the 90 minute mark, we can keep the stage open for additional contemplation. People are welcome to share your views. People are welcome to add uh, uh, some insights coming from your own respective studies, uh, maybe from different paramparik uh, bhashyas and things like that. And we can all enrich our own knowledge. This is part of a couple of initiatives we run under the Purushottama Yoga Club. Uh, Purushottama Yoga is the name of the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, a chapter that is uh, very widely believed to be the uh, very uh, uh, quick and nice and detailed summary of the entire Bhagavad Gita uh, by many, many great commentators, uh, by uh, Adi Shankar Bhagavad Pada to Acharya Madhva to a lot of commentators believe that Purushottama Yoga is the quintessential summary. And we will see that once in a while because we started this entire journey last November by looking into the, the 15th chapter and trying to get a sneak peek into the entire Bhagavad Gita. That's where we started with. And uh, uh, under this club, we do two things. One is the daily Bhagavad Gita Parayana, the guided chanting that we run at 6 o'clock India time for about 60 to 90 minutes. We recite approximately a hundred shlokas of Bhagavad Gita every day in a guided chanting fashion. Uh, that will help us complete all the 700 shlokas, 700, 701. The version that we see is 701 shlokas. Uh, so all the 701 shlokas of Bhagavad Gita we complete in a week. Uh, that will effectively make every saptaha, every week, a Bhagavad Gita saptaha. Uh, Bhagavad Gita saptaha is a very uh, revered uh, activity that many people take up. There are many different uh, benefits of chanting the Bhagavad Gita on a weekly basis. And some of us can perhaps allude to that uh, as part of our own experiences. But nonetheless, keeping that aside, uh, the daily chanting room helps us get the Vakshuddhi. With the Vakshuddhi, with the clarity of pronunciation, our ability to locate the words gets stronger. And with accurate location of the words in the shlokas, when we repeatedly contemplate, uh, our our understanding of Gita becomes all the more multifold. Uh, you know, the, the deeper meanings will start unraveling themselves very nicely. And to that extent, we also aid the entire uh, process, the Adhyatma process, with this weekly one session, where we try to get the word by word meaning in as much accuracy as possible, in as much honesty as possible, without any taint, without any opinion, and things like that. We, we just want to try to see what exactly Bhagavan Sri Krishna is trying to say. Of course, there are many, many attempts at bringing out Bhagavad Gita as it is, and they will all eventually end up having a certain opinion. So, not ruling that fact away completely, but nonetheless, this is just an honest attempt. And we keep this as a community exercise so that it becomes a little more rounded than just one person's perspective and things like that. 
And to that extent, the people that you see on the stage are just mere facilitators. None of us are experts of the Bhagavad Gita. None of us are experts of the Sanskrit Bhasha. So people are welcome to join us on the stage and add your uh, few insights to the process. Uh, the title of the room says we begin from Shloka 1 of the 8th Adhyaya, 8.01 onward. We have completed till the 7th chapter, the last time we met. We took a two-week break. For two weeks, we couldn't have it, uh, have the same session. But we resume now, today. Uh, we begin with the 8th Adhyaya. The story so far is that uh, the first six chapters, uh, you know, popularly people break the entire Gita into hexads, the Shatka. The first Shatka, uh, we could see that uh, the predominant amount of questions coming from Arjuna was the conflict between what is Shreyas, what is Prayas. He kept on referring to, you know, uh, shreyo no pashyami hatva you know, right from the first Adhyaya, what is Shreya, okay, has been a constant worry for him. And to that extent, he kept on asking very specifically to Krishna as well. You know, Yachreya eta yore kam tanme pruhi sunishitam. He asks that question, uh, you know, towards the beginning of the second Adhyaya. Uh, the beginning of the third Adhyaya begins with a similar kind of a question, you know. Uh, you know, Tadekam uh, Vadanishchitya Yena Shreyo Hamapnuya. You know, tell me what is it that you know that gives me Shreya? And repeat, repeat like you know, Yachreya Eta Yorekam Tanmi Bruhi. Similar question comes in the fifth Adhyaya. So repeatedly, the questions from Arjuna have been about the conflict between Shreya and Shreya. And some of us who have done some study of the Upanishads perhaps get better understanding of what this conflict essentially is. You know, what is really good for me? What is it that I start loving? Prayas is what is it that I start loving? Like eating sweets is prayas, but eating sweets in moderation is shreyas, right? So we all know that. So that's the that's a quick, you know, gloss over translation of that. But the first six chapters was all about shreyas, but towards the end of the sixth adhyaya, the kind of questions that Arjuna starts posing is at a different level altogether, right? So the end of the sixth adhyaya, the question from Arjuna was that where does the person go who does not complete his yoga samsiddhi? What happens? Even with a lot of shraddha, one who gets endowed into the path of yoga, you know, for some reason he does not accomplish the yoga. Where will he go? He would not have experienced the karma siddhi, the bhoga of the karma siddhi, and he does not get the yoga siddhi. Where does he go? Right? So the entire uh, uh, conversation from Krishna from there on is what led us into the seventh adhyaya also. Seventh adhyaya is essentially continuation of the sixth adhyaya. He was answering the same question. You know, there is no loss of effort, that yoga effort, in this life, nor in the life hereafter. Right? So that's the essence of it. And towards the end of it, you know, after having briefly laid out the paramatmika tattva, you know, jnanam teham savijnanam idam vakshyani asheshataha. That's what he said, right? So he spoke about the jnana, endowed with vijnana. Jnana is the knowledge. Vijnana is the visheshataha jnana, the vikrishtaha jnana, the vividhata jnana. So we can we can contemplate vijnana in different ways, right? So it's the vishishta, it's the special jnana, the distinguished jnana. And that distinguished jnana is all about the paramatma tattva, the aparaprakriti and the paraprakriti. That's what we get to hear from Krishna. The aparaprakriti is the bhumira, bonaru, vayu, all the the elemental stuff, the basic stuff in the in terms of the physical nature of the uh, creation, the, the five Mahabhutas, the five Tanmatras, the Ahankara, Buddhi, you know, all of this is his Apara Prakriti. And then Para Prakriti, the experiences, Rasoham Apsukaunte, Ya Prabhasmi Shashi Surya Yoho, Pranava Sarva Deteshu. So all of that, you know, Dharma Virudho, Bhuteshu Kamaha Asmi, all of that is his Para Prakriti. Like, you know, that, that's what we get to see when we get to hear from the Bhagavan. You know, after having said that, he also quickly lays down uh, how people, uh, you know, within this greatness of the Prakriti, how people then acquire the Asuri Prakriti and the Daivi Prakriti. Like, you know, the surrendering is the key. If you surrender to the Bhagavan, you get the Daivi Prakriti. If you do not surrender, if you keep on resisting the greatness beyond what we can grasp, if you think we know everything, there is the Asuri Prakriti. Like, you know, that, that's the quick uh, you know, uh, understanding we can quickly draw. And then towards the later part of the uh, seventh adhyaya is where the jnani lakshana, like, you know, how exactly the paramabhakta jnani, 
like you know vasudevah sarvamiti you know prapadyati like you know the one who completely surrenders to everything is this vasudeva you know that vasudeva ishavasya you know ishavasya midam sarvam yatkinchi jagatyam jagatro so everything is this ishvara like you know ishvara is this bhagavanta is what is sarvavyapta and nirlipta like you know we will see that a little later but you know he is a sarvavyapta you know sarvam khanvidam brahma everything is brahma satyam jnanam anantam brahma so the, the more and more we contemplate upon this you know we get to see that you know everything that kind of a mahatma is extremely durlabha extremely rare so that's what we get to hear and towards the end you know that is where we uh, get to see one shloka he quickly summarizes the entire seventh adhyaya esham tvantagatam paapam jananam punya karmana you know uh, te dvandva moha nirmuktah bhajante like you know uh we get to hear those people who have uh, removed their entire uh, papa papa karma of their past lives and things like that so one who completely without any kind of a dwandva okay uh, you know uh, they keep worshiping him you know bajante maam dridavrata with a determined austere uh, feeling they keep worshiping the bhagavan that's the essence of the seventh adhyaya right so we constantly and the advantages of doing that is that you know people who really really aspire to get liberated from this conundrum this uh, confusion this pain of jara marana of the old age and the death you know people who take shelter under him they will essentially know tat brahma viduhu they will know that big picture you know uh, akhilam karma viduhu they understand all that is happening around and they you know krishnam adhyatmam cha viduhu they also understand that the entirety about the adhyatma and then he finally concludes the seventh adhyaya saying that sa adibhuta sa adidaiva sa adiyajnam cha ye maam viduhu the one who knows me to be the one that is along with the adibhuta along with the adidaiva along with the adiyajna those people prayana kaleti even at the time of their departure no maam viduhu like you know they will understand me they they know me very well no yukta cheta sah ma viduhu with with proper intellect they understand me now see this this line sometimes gives a lot of confusion why why exactly krishna says that but when we look into some of the puranas right so either the story of ajamila you know as stated in the bhagavad purana or the story of uh, you know gajendra again that comes in the bhagavad purana right you no know, uh, gajendra moksha you no know, there is it's well known like you know when we look into puranas you know stories of the stories remembering bhagavan during the prayana kala is the ultimate path to moksha mo, no, uh, the mukti right now that is what he eventually said the person who understands me to be the one who is constantly with the adibhuta adi daiva adi yajna that person with proper yukta chetasa will know me will think of me constantly even at the time of the departure that is where we stop because which means then you are having mukti Oh Krishna, no, it is all me. Pick up the bow and fight. You don't have to worry about anything. This Adi Bhuta is also me. Adi Yajna is also me. Adi Daiva is also me. Your Paurusha is also me. Your Bana is also me. And eventually your Mukti is also me. All of this is even into me. So you know, you just need to pick up your bow and fight. At the end of the day, constant message to Arjuna is pick up the bow and fight. Tektuo Tishtha Paranta Pada. That's the line that we need to think, right? That's the implied line all throughout the Bhagavad Gita. right so this is where we stop but now we have questions from arjuna uh, this is what brings us to the eighth chapter this is the 10th round of bhagavad gita right this is the 10th uh, bhagavan vacha to so to say one cycle of bhagavan vacha is essentially one bhagavad gita so now we are entering the 10th round of bhagavad gita which is the 10th bhagavad gita itself right we had uh three rounds of bhagavan vacha completed in the second chapter another two in the third chapter one in the fourth chapter one continued from fifth to the sixth chapter and one happened within the sixth chapter and another one continued from sixth to the seventh so we have completed nine rounds of uh bhagavan vacha or the bhagavad gita because this is the bhagavad gita so upanishad so there are many bhagavad gita so we have completed nine such rounds or nine bhagavad gita we are about to enter uh we look into this website a beautiful website from the uh vmlt the vande mataram library trust uh, or the arubindo ashram 
put together compiled by dr sampadananda uh, quite useful website for what we try to achieve which is the pratipadarthana there will be slight variations in the way we would like to understand the words coming to what this website is trying to say and wherever it is opportune wherever it is appropriate we will try to interject and bring other perspectives because this is coming from one school of thought uh, but nonetheless the structure of the website is beautiful and most of the meaning irrespective of which school of thought we come from at the end of the day they all converge into the bhagavan ukti right so they are all coming from great parampara so nothing about what is being trying to say what is what is being uh, spoken there but we will try to pause a uh, given arms distance and then try to see if there is another way of interpreting the same word so but nonetheless we use this website click on the link given under the room title we will be taken to the first shloka of the eighth adhyaya the shloka reads like this arjuna uvacha kim tad brahma ki madhyatmam kim karma purushottama अर्जुन उवाच अर्जुन उवाच इंदि Visarga, the two dot aha goes lower, goes missing. Arjuna ha uvaacha becomes Arjuna uvaacha. Kim tad Brahma, Kim adhyatmam, Kim karma purushottama, adhi bhutam cha Kim proktam, adhi daivam Kim uchchate. There is no sandhi. There are all samuhas like no Kim tad Brahma. Kim adhyatma becomes Kim adhyatma. Not a sandhi. Both m and a are retained in Kim Kim adhyatma. Right? So they are all samuha. Right? There is no sandhi, but that is the breakdown. But these words are jumbled. We will unjumble them, put them into a proper prose order, and that is what is given in the section above called the anvaya. The anvaya uh, gives us the unjumbled prose order of uh, the words. So it reads like this: Arjuna ha uvacha, Arjuna ha uvacha. A e purushottama. तत् ब्रह्म किम अध्यात्म किम कर्म किम अभिभूत किम प्रोक्त अभिदैव च किम उच्यते इज आस्किंग क्वेश्चन फॉर सीरीज ऑफ क्वेश्चन राइट हे पुरुषोत्तम तत् ब्रह्म किम अध्यात्म किम कर्म किम अभिभूत किम प्रोक्त अभिदैव च किम उच्यते व्हाट डज दैट मीन दिस विल बी फेयरली सिंपल ऑन द टॉप वी हैव अ लिंक कॉल्ड डिक्शनरी वी क्लिक ऑन दैट राइट ए पुरुषोत्तम ओ पुरुषोत्तम दिस इज पुरुषोत्तम योग राइट दिस फर्स्ट टाइम कृष्णा इज बीइंग एड्रेस्ड एज पुरुषोत्तम वेरी स्पेशल वर्ड राइट ए पुरुषोत्तम उत्तम पुरुषस्वन्य परमात्मा इति उदाहृत दैट्स व्हाट वी हर्ड इन द 15th अध्याय ओके यस्मात् शरमतीतोह मक्षरादपि चोत्तम अतोस्मि लोके वेदेश प्रतित पुरुषोत्तम नो हु इज बियॉन्ड द akshara sorry akshara and much higher than the akshara okay that is beyond the akshara and the akshara he is the purushottama right he is the ultimate so which is when we look into the tattva tree where there is pancha mahabhuta pancha tanmatra and then the pancha jnanendriya and the pancha karmendriya and the mano buddhi ahankara chitta you no know, on top of that comes your purusha on top of that comes the ishvara um, about the purusha is the 25th tattva and Ishvara becomes the 26th tattva. It's the highest when we look into the Vaishnava tattva tree. That's the highest. So Purushottama is beyond the Akshara padartha and higher than any of the Akshara padartha also. So he is that Purushottama, and this signifies Arjuna's mindset. He understands who Krishna is, right? In all the state of, I mean, the the Vishada that we started off looking at in Arjuna in the first chapter. Now it perhaps gives us an indication that he is beyond all of that. because he is now gone beyond the confusion of what is shreyas prayas he started asking very intelligent questions in the sixth adhyaya let us see what this question is because his sambodhana to krishna is ultimate amazing purushottama that's what shri krishna is that's what krishna reveals later in the 15th adhyaya he reveals the same thing and that's what we started of looking at right yasmat charamati to akshorad bicha uttamah अतः अस्मि लोकेश वेदे च प्रतिदह अहम पुरुषोत्तम इति प्रतिदह दैट्स व्हाट ही सेज राइट आई एम नोन एज पुरुषोत्तम 
not only in the vedas but also in the lokas right that's what krishna says hey purushottama that's what arjuna is asking hey purushottama tat brahma kim what is that brahma because the seventh chapter ended te tat brahma vidu okay what is that brahma what is that tat brahma tat brahma kim because krishna said tat brahma vidu hote right so what is that brahma kim adhyatmam he says krishnam adhyatmam cha vidu okay what is that adhyatma kim karma akhilam karma vidu he says in the seventh chapter towards the end what is that karma right adhiputam kim because he says sadhibhuta sadhideva sadhiyajna to me you know ye vidu right so who understand me to be with this adhiputa adhideva adhiyajna they know me at the time of prayana that's what he said right what is adhiputa kim adhyatmam what is this sorry kim adhibhutam what what is this adhibhuta kim you no know, kim pro adhibhutam kim proktam what is spoken what is declared as adhibhuta adhidaivam kim uchyate what is known as adhidaiva what is called the adhidaiva please tell me right arjuna has the series of questions right i think the question gets completed in the next shloka as well but briefly arjuna is now asking please tell me what is this adhibhuta what is this adhidaiva what is this adhyatma what is this karma what is this brahma okay you say all of the you use all these words towards the end of the seventh adhyaya tell me what they are right let us make more sense of this uh, shloka before that i'll quickly read out what arbindo interpretation says arjuna said o purushottama what is that brahma what is adhyatmam what is karma what is declared to be adhibhuta what is called adhidaiva right we'll quickly go on to the next shloka shloka number 2 it reads like this you on the top of the screen you have the link called next click on that we go to the next shloka it reads like this adhiyajna katham kotra dehe smin madhusudana prayana kale cha katham jeyo siniyatatma bhi अधियज्ञ कथम कोत्र देहेस्मिन मधुसूदना प्रयाण काले च कथम ज्ञेयोसि नियतात्मभिः वी सी द पदच्छेद फर्स्ट अधियज्ञ कथम बिकम्स अधियज्ञो 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 अधियज्ञ कथम सॉरी अधियज्ञ कथम कह अत्र बिकम्स कोत्र राइट दैट्स द संधि अधियज्ञ कथम को अत्र कह अत्र अधिकम को अत्र देहे अस्मिन अधिकम देहे अस्मिन देहे अस्मिन मधुसूदन प्रयाण काले च कथम ज्ञेय असि ज्ञेय असि अधिकम ज्ञेयोसि नियत आत्मभि अधिकम नियत आत्मभि तत्र पदच्छेद वी लुक एट द अन्वय ए मधुसूदन अत्र अस्मिन देहे अधियज्ञ कह right kaha is one and similarly atra asmin dehe adiyajna katham you can see there are two questions kaha and katham there are two we can split it into two different questions and katham cha niyata atma bihi prayana kale jeyah asi right jeyah asi now what does that mean we look into the dictionary he madhusudana o madhusudana which is krishna right uh atra here asmin dehe in this body adhiyajnah kaha who is adhiyajna kaha is what or who right who is adhiyajna or what is adhiyajna and asmin atra dehe adhiyajnah katham katham asi you know adhiyajna how is this how how does it dwell you know how how do i see the adhiyajna in this body right katham cha niyatatma bih also how by the niyatatma that no by the niyata is yapa niyata niyata is uh, yatna right the, the self control atma like you know the self control people no katham cha niyatatma bih prayana kale jeya asi like you know how how should we know you at the time of prayana kale by the by the self control people Now, this, this looks very very simplistic uh, right let's quickly see what arobindo interpretation says it says uh, hey madhusudana 
ஓ மதுசூதனா வாட் இஸ் அது யஜ்ஞா இன் திஸ் பாடி and how in the critical moment of departure from this body from the physical existence are you to be known by the self controlled now look at this let's combine this two shlokas bharata ji you are not audible bharata ji your mic is muted and you are not audible Oh, Bharata ji, your mic is muted. You are not audible. You are still not audible. It's breaking. ஜி பிரேக்கிங் No, it's still breaking for me at least. Vijay Ji, Nakul Ji, can you hear properly? Yes, yes, it's not completely audible. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah, now it's good. Better is it? Okay. I need to keep my phone a little away. So I will not be able to see, check anything on the screen. Let me know. I mean, if there is something goes wrong, please let me know. Sure, Hello? sure. Yes, yes, Bharata Ji will let you know if something happens. Sure. Okay, so let's, let's quickly look at the two shlokas in conjunction. Basically, there are eight questions. Right? This is the eighth Adhyaya. There are eight questions in this uh, set of uh, two shlokas coming from Arjuna. Right? Kim Tad Brahma. What is that Brahma? Kim Adhyatma. What is that Adhyatma? Kim Karma. Purushottama. Very nice rhyming, right? Kim Tad Brahma, Kim Adhyatma, Kim Karma, Purushottama. Very nice rhyming words. But nonetheless, first he asks, what are the three things that you mentioned in the last but one shloka of the seventh Adhyaya? The Tad Brahma Viduhu, Krishnam Adhyatma, Karma Chachilam Viduhu. Right? So what are these three? Adhi Yajna Katham Kotra. Right? Dehesmin, sorry, uh, Kim Tad Brahma. Adhibhutan cha kim proktam. What is spoken of as Adhibhuta? And Adhidaivam cha kim muchere. And what is called the Adhidaivam? And Adhiyajna katham and kaha. Right? So there are two things. Adhiyajna katham. Adhiyajna kaha atra dehesmin. He madhusudana. So those are seven questions. And the last question. Prayana kale cha katham jeya asi. And how should you be known at the time of the departure? Now look at this. Right? Very intelligent questions coming from Arjuna, it might look like a very silly question. Why would uh, Arjuna not even be aware of such simple things? Because the way Krishna narrated these things, these concepts, at the end of the seventh Abhyaya, he spoke as though it's a matter of fact, right? Anybody would know these things. That's the way he spoke. But uh, Arjuna is interjecting. What is Brahma? What is Adhyatma? What is Karma? 
somewhere gives an impression that deep down arjuna knows they are all the same why are you calling them separately they are all the same right adibhuta kim proktam adidaivam kim so what is adibhuta what is adidaiva adi yajna kaha katham adi who is adi yajna and how is he how is he in his in his body now he in heaven he never spoke about the body being part of adi yajna right but arjuna knows when we refresh back our memory to the third chapter uh, bhagavan says something like this right uh, uh, you know saha yajna praja srishtva the creation happened as part of the yajna that's the adi yajna yajnena yajna maya janta deva is the expression that we get to hear in the purusha sukta in some of the vedic hymns right so we get to hear that so arjuna knows these things so somewhere we have to draw the conclusion that arjuna is quite quite intelligent how how is this adhi yajna who is this adhi yajna how how is they how is it in this body and prayana kale katham jnaya asi how should you be known at the time of the departure because arjuna knows this very well niyata atma bihi people see again niyata niyata self controlled and niyata is nitya yatna right people who are constantly endeavoring also people who are constantly endeavoring uh, one thing that is quite common common sight among many many people for such niyatatma bihi is that you know like what we heard as an expression in the 15th chapter right asanga shastrena dridhena chitva they are constantly in this active life they are not disconnected from life they are part of this very active life and that is what even bhagavan wants right evam pravartitam chakram this entire creation is a pravritti kind of a creation in this pravritti kind of a creation bhagavan expects everyone to be uh, please alert me if my voice goes away hello your voice is breaking bharta ji uh is it any better yeah now it's better but like not very smooth still okay. Okay. See, the power went off. The Wi-Fi is off. Good. The mobile signal is always. Now it's good. good. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, uh, coming back to the third of here, right? So, Bhagavan wants this life to be very, very active. He doesn't want people to disconnect it, stay disinterested. Now, people need to be contributing to this prakriti, right? That's the whole essence of creation. We all have a purpose. Purpose is not to uh, run away from. you know what this active life is mandating from all of us you know evam pravartitam chakram the pravritti kana pa chakra this yajna chakra this karma chakra is a pravritti kana pa chakra you know na anuvartayati iha yah the one who does not follow this active life you know aghayuhu this ayu is futile ayu you know, you know aghayuhu indriya rama he is the one who is uh, seeking unnecessary sense gratification moham parthas jeevati like you know he, he he his life is a is a life of futility like you know it's completely in vain whatever life that kind of a person who does not actively partake in this uh, you know karma chakra you know that kind of a person is a wasteful body uh, he is a sinner and he is a indriya harami like right? that the expression we saw so such a niyatatma sometimes the issue will be that you no know, uh, at the time of death see when we when we look into i think we spoke about this also very briefly uh, we all have perhaps lost one or two friends you know in the anjuna beach of goa and things like that so most of the deaths of drowning in goa and some of those uh, nasty places right is not because uh, the person drowned it's because the person was pulled by somebody who was drowning right uh, at the time of drowning it's very difficult because niyatatma bhi we constantly want to stay afloat uh even ajamela when he finally cried bhagavan's name narayana he called right uh, even uh, 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 gajendra when he called out uh, uh, you know uh, narayana yakilo uh, akila guru bhagavan namaste whenever you know whatever he called you know at the time of his uh, last moments right uh, even those things are out of uh, you know desperate attempts to save their lives like you know he, he he never gave it up right so niyatatma bihi we constantly strive to stay alive because staying alive is essential jara marana moksha right for the sake of jara marana mukti is what we constantly strive for so arjuna's question is very very valid that you know most of us 
it's not easy to remember bhagavan at the time of departure so he's asking how should we know you at the time of departure it's not easy to know you at the time of departure so arjuna when we look into this right and nyaya asi how are you to be known at the time of departure like you know, he also knows he is the purushottama he is the madhusudana and he knows that you know at the end of the day everything is brahma now you have given me the entire breakdown of all of these things explain to me these eight concepts like you know what is brahma what is adhyatma what is karma what is adhibhuta what is adhidaiva what is adhiyajna and how is this adhiyajna and how should i think of you at the time of departure because it's not easy and all of these things appear to be the same adhiyajna adhidaiva adhibhuta they are all part of the bhagavan right how should i know you differently right so two ways in which we can know one is that you know well you are bundling them all together explain to me in detail or arjuna now is getting more and more interested in this yoga sansindhi marga right he is with a pure jignasata state he is like okay explain to me more like you know i want to know more from you o purushottama because he is he is also addressing him as purushottama right so that's what we see uh the i think we saw the arbinda interpretation as well with that we move on to the next shloka give me one moment uh okay somebody had come up on stage i don't remember who but uh, yeah if anybody comes on stage if anybody wants to add something to the conversation please do so please do interrupt me once in a while uh with that we move on to the next shloka the next shloka reads like this shri bhagavanu va अक्षर ब्रह्म परम स्वभाध्यात्मुच्य भूत भावोद्भवको विसर्ग कर्म संजित अक्षर ब्रह्म परम स्वभाध्यात्मुच्य भूत भावोद्भवको विसर्ग कर्म संजित पदच्छेद पद श्लोक रीट लैक्ट अक्षर ब्रह्म परम स्वभाव अध्यात्म उच्यते स्वभाव अध्यात्म दिखम स्वभावोध्यात्म राइट दस संधि भूत भाव उद्भव करह भाव उद्भव भावोद्भव दस नदर संधि भावोद्भर भावोद्भव करह भावोद्भव करह विसर्गः दिखम भावोद्भव करो विसर्गः विसर्गः कर्म संजितः सो दोस आर द फ्यू संधि द अनजंबल देन एंड गेट द अनवय भगवाच परम अक्षर ब्रह्म स्वभाव अध्यात्म उच्य से भूत भाव उद्भवक विसर्ग कर्म संजित विसर्ग कर्म संजित भूत भाव उद्भवक विसर्ग कर्म संजित Bhagavan Vacha. The Bhagavan says, "The Bhagavan, the world has bhaga. You know, we are all his one tiny bhaga. Right? That's the that's the whole essence of the seven pradhyaya, the para, apara, prakriti, and all the experiences, the good experiences. It's all part of him, and we share that one small bit of it. And that's the seventh shloka of the Purushottama Yoga. You know." Uh, ममै वांशो जीवलोके जीवभूतः सनातनः सो वी आर ऑल हिज वन अंश वन भाग दैट्स वेयर ही इज द भगवान राइट भगवान वाच द भगवान सेज परमम अक्षरम ब्रह्मा द सुप्रीम अक्षर इज ब्रह्मा राइट व्हाट इज अक्षर अक्षर इज कूटस्थः अक्षरः इति उच्यते वी सॉ दैट राइट इन द 15th चैप्टर कूटस्थोक्षर उच्यते यू नो क्षरः सर्वाणि भूतानि कूटस्थोक्षर उच्यते ऑल लिविंग बीइंग्स आर टेंपरल दे आर ऑल क्षर दे विल पेरिश एट वन पॉइंट इन टाइम अक्षरः इज राइट एट द समिट कूटा कूटा इज एट द समिट कूटा इज द टॉप कूटा इज द पीक ओके हु इज एट द टॉप द भगवान राइट द सुप्रीम भगवान और मे बी द ब्रह्मा महालक्ष्मी द द द मूल प्रकृति I am the Bhagavan. These three are the Akshara, right? So they are they are at the top, right? So the Paramam Akshara is the Brahma. Brahma is that supreme Akshara, the supreme imperishable. Because even among the imperishable, there is Lakshmi, there is Chaturmaka Brahma, 
and there is a para brahma that para brahma is the brahma that i am referring to i am not referring to any other brahma see brahma again brihatvat brahma right there are many many big things but this is the ultimate big thing i am talking about krishna is clarifying to arjuna i am talking about that para brahma which is the parama akshara and the, the ultimate imperishable even at the time of the end of the kalpa that akshara brahma tattva does not change it remains the way it is right the paramam aksharam brahma swabhava swasya bhava our own nature one's own self nature you know swabhava adhyatmam uchyate right swabhava one's own nature okay is the adhyatma adhi no uchyate bhuta bhava udbhava karah visarga कर्म इति संगीतः भूत भाव उद्भव भूतानां भावः भूत भावः द एक्सप्रेशन द फीलिंग्स द मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ द लिविंग बीइंग्स इज भूत भाव भूत भूतानां भावः भूत भाव भूत भावस्य उद्भवः भूत भावो उद्भवः नो द द स्प्रिंगिंग अप ऑफ द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ द लिविंग बीइंग्स इज द भूत भावो उद्भव एंड द वन हु क्रिएट्स द करह bhuta bhav bhuta bhavodharam karah so the one who creates that uh, you know the up the bringing up of the expression of the living beings that's the bhuta bhavodhava karah so the, that which brings into existence all beings and their subjective and objective states which is the expression that's the way we have to look at it right? bhutanam bhavam udbhavasya karah so bhutanam bhavasya udbhavasya karah the one that creates the udbhava of the bhava of the bhuta right that visarga visheshatah sarga v v is uh, vishesha right vishesha vividha vikrishta the different ways we can understand the sarga sarga is the created that special creation that distinctive creation which created the bhuta bhava udbhava okay that karma that action is 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 the so karma sanjita is known to be karma is called as karma or samyak jnata like you know it is known as it is called as it is given the name as karma so this is very beautiful right i mean might be little confusing when we initially try to get to the skin of it but understand this what is karma like you know karma is basically that visarga विसर्ग इज द विशेषत सर्ग और द विशिष्ट सर्ग और द विविधत सर्ग दन दट क्रिएट द मल्टीप्लिकेशन एफेक्ट सो वॉट इज द मल्टीप्लिकेशन एफेक्ट दर इज अ ब्यूटिफुल एक्सापल हि भूत भाव उद्भव वी सी थ्री वर्ड टाइप भूत मीन बीइंग्स भाव इज एक्सप्रेशन लाइक द सब्जेक्टिव ऑब्जेक्टिव स्टेट एंड उद्भव नो ब्रिंगिंग टू एक्सिस्टेंस उद्भव इज all the three when we look into the sanskrita dictionaries the root of all the three words are the same bhutatu we call it as bhutatu bhuta bhutatu bhava bhutatu udbhava bhutatu swabhava is also bhutatu but the same dhatu the same root prakriti nature has given rise to different multiple multiple things one is a being one is an expression of it one is an action that brings into the being right so all the things are rooted in the same word called the bhu now, grammatically somebody is interested in grammatical ways that is the vividhata the karma karma is that which creates multiple out of few multiple out of one there was a mula prakriti mula prakriti gave rise to the pancha mahabhuta pancha mahabhuta each one carried a distinctive experiences called the pancha tanmatra now the combination of the bhuta and the tanmatra had to be experienced we got the pancha jnana indriya in those experiences some actions became inherent we got into the state of karma karmendriya the pancha karmendriya and then you know those karmendriya their actions on the experiences gave certain feelings we got the manas you know the feelings got into intellectual contemplation we got the buddhi you know then the association of them to me that i see i is a very beautifully in mathematical connotation 
i is uh, the imaginary thing right it's used in the complex variables uh, those of you who are keen on the mathematical expression this i is also equally complex right there is a ahankara i there is a buddhi i there is a manas i there is a chitta i right so the, the we always tend to associate okay this is mine this is my favorite god ichha devata even in bhagavan we have that ahankara no in our upasana for the bhagavan also we have that ahankara may not be dura ahankara but nonetheless there is ahankara right so the same prakriti gave rise to multiple 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 different things and then finally after looking at the entire multiplicity we then try to understand the mula mahat prakriti through that we try to understand the mula purusha prakriti and then through that we try to understand the mula ishvara prakriti right then the 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 diversion and the convergence like you know the uh, convergence you know divergence and the convergence we see both of them right in the same thing so the visarga as a word that krishna uses here you know, the more we contemplate it gives us different different expressions right bhuta bhava udbhava kara visarga okay that visarga that uh, that the creation which leads rise to the multiplicities of the expressions the multiplicities of the living entities the multiplicities of the udbhava udbhava is also not just one right we keep coming again and again and again and again as jivatmas we keep coming this udbhava is also visheshatah vividhatah creation right it's, it's so when you contemplate upon this right this entire prakriti itself is karma right when we understand what got created that gave rise to the bhutana bhavasya udbhava Okay, that is nothing but the creation, which is the prakriti. The entire creation that we see, combination of the sentient and the insentient beings. One second. That itself is karma. So, what is this akila karma? It is basically nothing but prakriti. Like you know, karma, karma, brahmo, bhavam, vidhi. That is one thing that we heard already in the third adhyaya. Karma is brahmo, bhavam. It is born out of brahma. what got born out of brahma the prakriti this action so which means the creation is currently on as we speak the prakriti is getting created right each of our action is adding to that prakriti whether it's the asuri prakriti or the daivi prakriti depends on the way we take it but it is still part of prakriti it's adding to the prakriti prakriti continues to be created while it is created it continues to get created because we are adding to that action so or maybe through us the action is getting continued the action action is getting further you know from where it started from where it is and where it has to go it is a continuation right it's not so we can't say that the creation happened the creation continues to happen right so that visarga that's the speciality that's the visheshatah of the sarga of this creation the visheshatah is that you know it's the present continuous tense you no know, karma brahmo bhavam vidhi brahma akshara samudbhavam he answered all of that in the third adhyaya also but because this question from uh, arjuna is coming he is giving a little more elaborate explanation to the same thing right it's all part of the same yajna that started long long ago sah yajna prajah srishtva that is all this part of the adhi yajna okay adhi yajna uh, oh he hasn't come to that. that that's the next one but basically brahma is that parama akshara the supreme akshara is the brahma okay swabhava is the adhyatma and bhuta bhava uddhava karaha that visarga is called as karma the creation itself is the karma all that is all that has happened all that continues to happen all that will happen in the future all of this collectively put together is that akila karma right what what he spoke of earlier right so the more we contemplate i think there is more to see again this is not from bhashya this is just looking at what bhagavan himself has spoken earlier right let's see what aurobindo translation says for this the bhagavan uvacha the blessed lord said the supreme akshara oh my nice akshara is the supreme brahma or the supreme akshara is the brahma when we look into the samskrita anvaya being translated its supreme brahma supreme akshara is brahma is what we understood paramam aksharam brahma right but here he says akshara is parama brahma <laughs> right both are okay 
I think I think uh, Sampadananda ji has played with the word word play because in Anvaya we can always change the position of the word. You know, Paramam Aksharam Brahma we can say that, or Aksharam Paramam Brahma we can say that. Right? We can see both. So Akshara is a supreme Brahma. Swabhava is called Adhyatma. Karma is the name given to the creative movement Visarga, which brings into existence all beings and their subjective and objective states. Bhuta bhava udbhava karaha, udbhava karaha visarga, karma iti sanjita. Right now, see we see adhi atma adhyatma. Right adhi when we see adhi, it is like uh, uske prati. Like you know when we say in Hindi prati towards in reference to. In reference to atma is adhyatma. In reference to bhuta is adhi bhuta. In reference to kuritu, in Kannada we say kuritu, prati, uske prati. That's the way we can understand. So adhyatma is adhi atma. Right? That is basically swabhava, understanding yourself, about the self, discovering the self, discovering our true bhavana is the adhyatma. Right? And karma is a, all that is part of this creation that has happened, that continues to happen, that will happen. Which brings into existence all the beings and their different, different bhavanas, bhavas, you know, subjective and objective states. Beautiful translation, uh, but yeah, it takes a while for us to assimilate it. Uh, that's the third shloka. With that, we move on to the next one, fourth shloka. Again, Krishna, see, one thing we need to note the Ashta Atmaka Brahma, right? At the end of the day, everything is Sarvam Kalvitam Brahma. But Arjuna asked this eightfold question about the same thing. Let's understand that, right? It's the same thing that Arjuna asked the question of. Now, answering this question is not easy. When we look into the way the chapters are designed, this entire discourse from Krishna now spreads into three chapters, right? The entire eighth chapter. Is answering the same set of eight questions from Arjuna. The entire ninth chapter is a continuation of the same answers, the same discourse from Bhagavan. And he continues into the tenth chapter also. Some good 10, 11, 11 shlokas of the tenth chapter is also a continuation of the same Upadesha. So, these eight fold questions from Arjuna, those two questions, those two shlokas, which contains eight questions. The answer to this is quite long, about 71 shlokas, and this is perhaps, this 10th round of Bhagavad Gita is perhaps the longest discourse, 71 shlokas in total. That's a long one. So, uh, he tries to summarize them very simplistically, but I think we have to slowly do the dharana of this. Like he will help us in the course of doing the dharana, and we have to contemplate upon these points again and again and again. So, we have to go slow. We can't jump up and say that oh, we understood everything. Just because he said, okay, this is Sadhyatma, this is Brahma, this is Karma, we can't jump up and say, okay, no, I understood. Because he will elaborate about the same Brahma later. He will elaborate about the same Karma later. He will elaborate on the Adhyatma later. Right? So, uh, in these 71 shlokas, we can safely say that he continues to talk about the same eightfold questions that came from Arjuna, which is roughly nine shlokas per one concept. <laughs> so, that's the length. Like 72 divided by 8, right? It's, it's a long one, long discourse. So we have to take them slowly. We have to assimilate them. So I just said this because this is a long discourse coming, addressing the same set of questions from Arjuna. So, huh. so with that, we move on to the fourth shloka. The fourth shloka reads like this. Uh, if there is any disturbance to my voice, please do alert me. Right? So we move on to the Fourth sloka, it reads like this Adhibhutam charo bhavaha Purushas chadhi daivatam Adhi yajnyo hame vatra Dehe deha brutamvara Adhibhutam charo bhavaha Purushas chadhi daivatam Adhi yajnyo hame vatra Dehe deha brutamvara Right? The Padacheda, it reads like this Adhibhutam Sharaha Bhavaha. Sharo Bhavaha. Purushaha cha Purushas cha. Purushaha cha Adi Daivatam. Adi Yajna Ahameva Atra Dehi. 
ke deha pratam vara okay when we unjumble and try to see the anvaya it uh, reads like this he deha pratam vara kshara bhavah adibhutam purushah adidaivatam atra dehe cha ahameva adiyajna right what does that mean we click on dictionary he deha pratam vara o best among the embodied beings deha pratam vara vara is supreme deha pratam like you know bhrata bharti like you know poshana the one who is amazingly filling up this body so he is referring to the atma called arjuna he is not referring to the body called arjuna no natve vaham jatanasam we are all eternal beings right so we have lived forever eternity in the past and we will continue to live uh, for eternity in the future also so he is referring to that supreme divine soul he is he is he is connecting to arjuna at a very very different level altogether he deha vrutam vara so this is very important sambodhana he is reminding arjuna indirectly you are a deha vrutam vara you are the best among the embodied beings you have an amazing physical body you take care of the physical body excellently and you are also that supreme atma we have to look at it in multiple different ways right and that is that is important because kshara bhava adibhutam the adibhuta in reference to the bhuta bhautika tattva you have to know that it is all about the kshara bhava the perishable bhava the perishable beings the perishable the result of mutable beings is the objective of phenomenon phenomenon of being adibhuta is all about the perishable beings kshara bhava purusha adidaivatam purusha is adidaivata purusha so puresh pureshayanat or pureshete the one inside the pura see pura need not be just a city right uh, devanam pura ayodhya we say that right ashta chakra navadwara uh mahanarayan uh, narayan upanishad right so that's that's the one where we hear that right so ashta ashta chakra navadwara you know devanam pura ayodhya our body which consists of ashta chakra when we understand from the kundalini perspective uh, the whether we like it or not whether we acknowledge or not these chakras are existent right it, they are there we can't help it you know how to tap into it how to make use of it is up to us right but ashta chakras are there nava dwara sar also there whether we like to do vyapara or not whether i want to see objects or not i mean closing my eyes is my voluntary choice but my eyes are there they are the minute i open them the vyapara is on right i start forcing on objects on this creation the minute i open my ears i mean ears unlike the eyes doesn't even have a deliberate closing it's just open by default the ears are open so shabda that's where shabda tanmatra becomes the first one whether we like it or not whether we want it or not voluntary involuntary shabda enters any sound that is around us it enters right so navadwara ashta chakra are there and that devanam pura ayodhya this body is the abode of the devatas which means there are different forces i mean what we see as the physical body is one right given the physical parts to play to themselves right we would see the entire solid parts of the body to get settled at the bottom most layer all the liquid part to float on top and the air the aerosols you know go on top but no our body has solid liquid gas in intermixed proportions because there is prana basic element there is prana and there are different different purushas what is purusha purushas are these forces like for example see water can be the body water can be the adibhuta but the water does different functions as a river it is flowing as a sea it is making the garshana as a sea it is making creating the waves right as a sap it is supplying ingredients to the to the plant you know it it it, it is doing different functions because there are different forces acting upon the same water body in different ways like you know in the in the just just during the uh, rainy season it creates a lot of icicles there is a coldness it, it brings into Uh, the fold uh, when it is vaporizing it's creating the heat the same water is subject to different purusha pradartha purusharthas you know subject to play with it so 
purusha puresha it is of the one which is in the body and create some force upon it like for example the the same water i can either drown or i can float upon it right if i understand the viscosity the different tensile strengths around it and things like that i can either stay afloat it i can even go drown into it the what is causing the change is the way i make use of the respective purusha padartha right different forces within it and the and, and purushas are multiple it's not just a one purusha that is where in the tattva tree also there is a purusha and there is a ishvara ishvara is the ultimate one but underneath that ultimate one there are multiple different forces like there is a aditya there is a chandra there is a varuna so we call them all adi daiva that's why we call them as devatas so purusha adi daivata the different forces which in equilibrium in a collective state of equilibrium which then regulate the entire life you know force you no know, keeps the life in a certain order that is the adi daiva right the pandemic outbreak the cyclonic impact all of this is basically adi daiva something so that is where we try to create you no know, put some oma in place and try to uh, pray to those respective forces to calm down calm down because there are forces like you no know, there is aditya force there is a varuna force there is a marut force you no know, there are different different devaganas all these devaganas are basically different purusha and they all roll up to the ultimate you no know, purushottama so that's what was addressed to shri krishna as uh, the way we try to understand so like for example purusha sukta right sahasra shirsha purusha so again there are different versions of the same purusha sukta the rigvediya yajurvediya purusha sukta says sahasra shirsha purusha the 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 heads are multiple but there is a purusha one purusha but atharva vediya purusha sukta says sahasra shirsha purusha even the purushas are multiple with multiple heads both are good both are equally good right so because ultimately one says that you know uh, there is one supreme purushottama who has thousand heads he appears as marut in one form he appears as aditya in another form he appears as nakshatra in another form he appears as indra as vishnu as uh, you know uh, vayu you know prana in different different forms he plays different different role of the purusha purusha tattva right but ultimately he is the same or there are different the way atharva veda says but the one that regulates the adibhuta which resides in the bhautika padartha and gives some life into it that is purusha right pureshite pura puresh you know puri shayana the one who by the dwelling inside the pura will be known as purusha and the set of these purusha forces that regulate this entire life is the adidaiva so what is adidaiva purushah cha adidaiva sam that's the answer given by krishna uh we have to perhaps contemplate in this level of detail only because uh, most of us are disconnected from our uh, traditional book of knowledge you know, if we were to be part of the traditional gurukula system all of these concepts are like nursery rhymes they are all elementary learning but because we are the manasa putras of english language the western education system some of it is uh, perhaps very uh, new to us and for some of you it might not be new but i make an attempt because uh, you know the audience that we address are the manasa putras of english language so for for us it could be oh you know surprise factor but these are all very very elementary stuff when we look into our ancient gurukula system but under is the kshara bhava right the the uh, impermanent uh, you know sentient objects they are the adibhuta and the one that is inside these adibhuta trying to create some force some life force you know that can be regulated you know into a nice life form uh, in equilibrium that is the purusha purusha adi daivatam atra dehe cha ahameva adi yajna in this deha here i am only the adi yajna this is going back to that shloka right sah yajna praja sushtha puro vachak prajapati so yajna when and also right yat purushena havisha deva yajna madanvata like no see when the initial yajna was to happen there was nothing right what did bhagavan do he offered himself into the yajna and from him in that yajna in that burning of the yajna you know grishma idmah sharad dhavihi like you know 
the difference i mean that's the expression given by the rishi muni right but nonetheless he put uh, the summer was the fire uh, sharad uh, the, the, the autumn became the uh, uh, the uh, idma like you know grishma uh, idma sharad abhi the sharad became the oblation like you know so vasanto asya sidajyam like you know vasanta became the g the the fuel for the yajna like so when we look into this purusha sukta right some of these expressions are brilliant you know when there was nothing in the kalpa you know kalpadi when there was nothing it was bhagavan who offered himself into the yajna so yajnena yajna mayajanta deva tani dharmani pratama nyasya like in that those are the kind of expressions we get to hear in the purusha sukta so this entire yajna that bhagavan created was part of the creation the creation is nothing but a yajna there is a lot of action going on yatna which is the ya part of yajna and there is a lot of realization happening also nya the jnana part of the yajna also and he is that he is that ultimate yajna yajnyo vai vishnu is what uh, you know adi shankara bhagavad pada keeps on referring to uh, in his pasha whenever we hear the word yajna so yajnyo vai vishnu is the shruti vakya that adi shankara keeps on quoting this yajna is vishnu himself because at the beginning when there was nothing he offered himself okay from him he brought out uh, multiple living beings and he made them also being contributors of the yajna and he is making all of us also you know yajnartha karmano yatra loko yam karma bandhanah he is telling us now that you know whatever action we do which is non yajnartha is karma bandhika like you know he it will bind you so whatever action you do please do that as part of the yajnartha don't do anything you know contrary to the yajna is what he says so he is the yajna he started the yajna he created the yajna he made us all being part of the yajna and the yajna continues to be it's not a past it's a present continuous yajna we are all currently live and direct in that yajna and that yajna is me adhi yajna is me i am inside all of you right uh, you know prabhasmi shashi surya yo pranav sarva vedeshu shabda che paurusham nushu punyo gandha prithivyam cha so by being those amazing paratattva prakriti inside all of us he is the one who is infusing life and that's what he is explaining atra dehe ahameva adhi yajna in this body here i am only that adhi yajna i am there inside each one of you no samo no samam nirdosham hi samam brahma right that's the expression we saw in the fifth chapter that nirdosha brahma is there inside all living beings no bhoktaram yajna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhrudam sarva bhutana to the end of the fifth adhyaya that's the way we have to understand him right he is the bhoktara and the maheshwara of all the yajna and the tapas so that's the adhi yajna he is the adhi yajna so he is answering now what is bhuta what is brahma what is karma so so far he answered uh, uh, the seven questions right kim tat brahma kim adhyatma kim karma he and answer uh, purushottama adhi yajna uh, adhi bhutam cha kim proktam adhi yajna kim uchyate he and then uh, adhi uh, what what's that adhi adhi bhutam cha kim proktam adhi daivam kim uchyate what is adhi adhi bhuta adhi daiva and adhi yajna katam kotra he answered these two the last question which is uh, prayana kale cha katam ye yosi perhaps is coming in the next shloka we will see that little later but before we move on let's quickly look at what arvindo translation says right krishna continues to say adhibhuta is kshara bhava beautiful this website now uh, stays away from giving translation they are all using the words as non translatables adhibhuta is kshara bhava adhidaiva is purusha <laughs> very nice i like this translation no attempt it is all keeping them as non translatables i myself am the lord of the sacrifice adhi yajna here in this body o oh, best among the embodied now this is the most important thing you already have that paramatma tattva inside you arjuna when he says he deha brutam vara you have best of me already inside you <laughs> that's the answer he is telling right to because he addressed him as purushottama you are no less no naram chaiva narottamam right that's the beginning of mahabharata right as much as reverence is there for krishna from arjuna arjuna is also revered by krishna when krishna called, when when arjuna called him mahabaho 
Krishna also called him Mahabahu. At the same time, we saw that in the sixth Adhyaya. So there is a lot of mutual reciprocation of respect between Nara and the Narayana here. Right? So we see that. Huh, that's the quick take. Uh, we move on to the next shloka, shloka number five. Before that, if there are any interjections, please pitch in. Uh, more than happy to accommodate. Okay, we move on to the fifth shloka. It says, Antakale chamameva smaran muktva kale varam yatrayati samadhavam yatina stetra samshayaha. Antakale chamameva smaran muktva kale varam Yah prayati samadhavam yati nastya na asti atra nastyatra samshayaha. What's the padacheda for this? Antakale chamam eva smaran muktva kalevaram yah prayati saha madbhavam. Become sa madbhavam. There are two sandhis there. Sa madbhavam yati na asti atra samshayaha. Na asti atra becomes nastyatra. Right? Two sandhis there. Na asti nasti, nasti atra nastyatra. So when we unjumble them, we see the anvaya. Antakale yaha maneva smaran kalevaram muktva cha prayati. Saha matbhavam yati atra samshayaha na asti. What does that mean? We click on dictionary. Okay, hey Deha Pratamvara, again referring to the same Arjuna in the same Sambhotana. Hey Deha Pratamvara, oh excellent among the embodied beings. Antakale, at the end time, at the time of one's own end. Yaha maan eva smaran kalevaram muktva. You know, yaha maan eva smaran, the one who thinking about me only, remembering me only. Kalevaram Muktva, having given up this body, the mortal remains. Cha Prayati and departs. Saha, he, Mat Bhavam Yati. He will acquire my Bhava. Atra Samshayaha Na Asti. There is no doubt in this. Right? There is no element of doubt in this. The one who thinks about me at the time of his departure, he will acquire my bhava only. There is no doubt about it. Uh, he didn't answer how to think about you. He's just answering what's the benefit of thinking about me. Katham nyeyaha asi. How are you to be known at the time of prayana kala? Is the question from Arjuna. Uh, Krishna answers, at the time of your departure, the one who thinks about me and departs from this body and gives up this body, he will acquire my bhava alone and there is no doubt about it. There is no question about it. Let's see what Aurobindo interpretation says. Right? Whoever, whoever leaves his body and departs remembering me at his time of end, comes to my bhava, that of Purushottama, my status of being, tad bhama paramam mama. Right? There is no doubt about it. There is no doubt in it. Right? We will contemplate a little more on this. We will see a few more shlokas. I think it's a sequence, right? They're all interconnected. But nonetheless, he doesn't answer directly Arjuna's question. How should we think about you? He doesn't answer. He's just telling the advantages of thinking about it. And we will contemplate more also. Why, how, and things like that. Right? We will see this. The next shloka, we go to the next one. So, detailed, some, some elaborate contemplation, we will park it aside for some time. We move on to the next shloka. Yam yam vapisma ranbhavam tyajatyante kalevaram tamtame vaiti kaunteya sadatadbhava bhavitaha Yam yam vapis maran bhavam tyajat yante kalevaram tam tame vaiti kaunte ya sadatad bhava bhavitaha. The padacheda yam yam va api smaran bhavam tyajatyan tyajati ante kalevaram tyajati ante tyajatyanti va api va api. 
तम तम एव एति एव एति एव एति काउंटे या सदा तत् भाव भावित हा सो वी लुक एट द अनजंबलिंग ऑफ दिस द अनवया ए काउंटे या हे कुंती पुत्र अंते यम यम वा अभी भावम स्मरण कलेवरम त्यजति सदा तत् भाव भावित हा तम तम एव एति व्हाट डज दैट मीन वी क्लिक ऑन डिक्शनरी ए काउंटे या ए कुंती पुत्र अर्जुना अंते इन द एंड यम यम वा अभी भावम स्मरण विचवर विचवर भावा बीइंग रिमेंबर ओके यम यम वा अभी भावम स्मरण विचवर विचवर भावा बीइंग रिमेंबर कलेवरम तेजति गिव्स अप हिज बॉडी abandons his body sacrifices his body which is actually give up which is basically dies at the time of death whichever bhava you think of sada tat bhava bhavitah okay always contemplating that bhava tam tam eva eti that that only attains okay whichever whichever bhava you think of at the time of your departure okay by being constantly endowed in that kind of a mindset you will acquire that only now now there are two things that krishna is addressing here one in the previous shloka he doesn't answer arjuna's question right he only says whichever form you if at if you at the end of the departure if you can think of me you will attain me there is no doubt about it that's what he says in the previous shloka now he says whichever whichever thought you carry at the time of your departure being constantly worried about that okay you will acquire that bhava only at the time of departure after you having you after having given up this body which means if i am going behind money obviously i will be constantly my subconscious thinking will be money 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 if i am going behind womanizing subconscious thought will be always womanizing 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 if i constantly think about slop if my favorite pastime is slopping sitting on the couch and spending uh, endless amount of time subconsciously my interest levels is that sense gratification you know binge eating lying down on the couch you know binge watching of netflix and all of this nonsense right if my constant uh, you know inherent uh, you know subconscious craving is for books 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 if i can develop that kind of a interest levels then subconsciously i will be always looking to uh, you know get more books do more reading and things like that so whichever thought you constantly uh, bring in you know sada tad bhava bhavitah be constantly endowed in that thought whichever thought you carry at the time of giving up your body you will acquire that only which means at the time of like for example see in the puranas there are stories of bharata king bharata right at the time of the yajna i mean he sits on the yajna he is supposed to be contemplating on bhagavan but suddenly he will find one uh, new born deer being abandoned so he starts developing attachment to the deer and uh, he has this unexpected death so he thinks about the deer at the time of his death he is thinking about the plight of the deer how will that deer survive without him and he was born as a deer now these are all illustrations right whatever comes in the purana uh, sometimes they are illustrations but basically that's the what that's what it is so, you know at the time of my uh, they say right if you if you are a sex hungry person you will be born as a pig in the next janma something like that right so because that is that is the janma which will give you which means see in the previous chapter in the seventh chapter yeah you know uh, yo yo yam yam tanum bhaksya shraddha yachita michati bhagavan does the commensurate job he doesn't do anything special you go to him something with something he will amplify that and return it back to us right with whichever bhava we go to bhagavan with he will bless us the same way if i go for uh, the 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 carnal lifestyle he will bless me with the carnal lifestyle in the next janma that's what he eventually says here right so yam yam vaapi smaram bhava tejatyante kalevaram तम तमे वेति कौंतेय सदा तद्भाव भावितः यम यम भावं स्वरं कलेवरं त्यजति नो विद अ कांस्टेंट कॉन्टेम्पलेशन ऑन एनीथिंग व्हिच एवर थॉट यू कैरी एट द टाइम ऑफ गिविंग अप योर बॉडी यू विल अक्वायर दैट ओनली 
at the at the end of giving up the body now he is giving the hint how to think of you during the time of uh, end think of me all the time sada tad bhav bhavita because when you constantly think about anything at the time of giving up your body also you end up thinking about the same thing right and if you think about me during the time of your end you will acquire me on the there is no doubt about it right so now he is slowly building the logical construct there so just see that very nicely we will look into the arabian translation it says whoever at the end abandons the body thinking upon thinking upon any form of being to that form he attains o kaunteya into which the soul was at at each moment growing inwardly during the physical life so sada tad bhav bhavitah okay constantly contemplation contemplation on anything ante yam yam smaran bhavam tyajati akalevaram tyajati at the end whichever with that thought you know when he gives up his body tam tam eva eti he will acquire that form only very simplistic very logical construct right uh we move on to the next shloka now again see he is slowly coming to build now he says the next shloka tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara yuddhya cha mayyar pitamano buddhir mam eva ishyasya sanchaya sanchaya sanchayam there are two versions uh, popularly but yeah there are many versions of bhagavad gita but of all the scriptures i think this is perhaps a little more consistent right so tasma sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara yuddhya cha mayarpita mano buddhi mam eva eshyasi asamshaya right so what does that mean i mean padacheda tasma sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara yuddhya cha mai arpita mai arpita mai arpita manah buddhi maam mano buddhir maam eva eshyati eva ishyati asamshayam eshyat maame vaishyatya samshayam look at this uh, parachedha right it is doing parachedha for asamshayam whereas in the shloka it says asamshaya so they have given both versions <laughs> this is a nice website they have given the variety here itself right so asamshaya there asamshayam in the padacheda well both are okay right? let's not break our head let's see what the anvaya is and the proper prose ordering of this uh, shloka tasma sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara yuddhya cha mai arpita mano buddhi asamshayam mam eva eshyati what does that mean we click on dictionary tasmat therefore sarveshu kaleshu in all the times maam anusmara think about me remember me see note from shloka number 5 almost every shloka until i think the 14th shloka smarana smaran anusmaran this word is constant some of you might see this chapter has a strong uh, uh you know reverberation it it kind of has its very nice uh, uh, shared theme in the patanjali yoga sutra patanjali yoga sutra there is a good description of pranava omkara akshara brahma when we say akshara akshara is also letter we will see that later right uh, there is also letter right in patanjali yoga sutra uh, there is also definition of smriti smarana smriti anubhuta vishaya sam pramosha smriti smriti is the way we remember right we remember newton's third law of motion <laughs> we remember einstein's einstein's laws of uh, relativity we remember faraday's we, we remember a lot of things right from science from history from history books not from history we remember from history books rote learning we would have done some rote learning that is not smriti smriti is not like oh e equals mc square it's not like that we can't go back you know lingering thoughts upon things that we haven't experienced we have to experience anubhuta vishaya sam pramoshaha iti smriti smriti is by definition 
the constant recollection of the experiences good experiences right the the educated experiences when we when we look into granthas like manusmriti some of us do that manusmriti study right every sunday same time uh, in the same uh, forum uh, in the same clubhouse platform some of us do manusmriti smriti right the dharma grantha is also called the smriti because it's the it's the collection of good experiences of the society that's what even manu says right with vadbihi sevitah sabbihi nitya madvesha ragbihi hridaye nabhyanu jnatah yo dharma stam nibodata like the, the one that has been with their complete heartful sanction the good people the noble people the truthful people whatever they followed in this society that is what i am going to narrate to you not something that i want to see as a society functioning it is not his wish list it is what good people were already practicing and presenting in front of you so smriti is the sam pramosha it's the well acknowledged lingering of the thoughts around anubhuta vishaya of the experienced uh, experiences good experiences that is smriti so mam anusmara yam smarati no yam yam bhavam smaran it is it is not non experiential remembrance when we say mam anusmara while the word remember is there something that we need to cautiously add is that in smarana it is not just some unnecessary smarana it is an experiential smarana we have to experience the bhagavan when he says mam anusmara you know remember him where do we experience him rasoham apsu kaunteya prabhasmi shati surya yoho have we experienced rasa in the liquids yes of course have we experienced the prabha in the shashi surya yes of course so pranavah sarva vedeshu shabdah ke paurusham drushu have we experienced the paurusha in the purushas of course yes have we experienced the sound in the akasha yes of course have we experienced the punya gandha the good smell in the prithvi yes of course okay punya gandha prithvya cha tejas cha asmi vibhava cha okay so jivanam sarva bhuteshu have we experienced jivana of course yes right have we experienced siddhi of course yes it's just a matter of acknowledging that okay behind all of this there is paramatma right without that acknowledging then we can't do the anusmaran of the paramatma so every step of our life whatever good sound we hear if in case some words that came through my mouth which is the bhagavan's words if they sounded nice please understand there is bhagavat tattva behind them so bhagavat tattva is there in everything if somebody comes up on stage and asks some good question well of course that person has to be given credit but basically he has the siddhi he has the bhagavad anugraha the bhagavan tattva is also there so when he says tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara at all times think about me remember me not think about me remember me remember those experiences go smarana is not blind remembrance it is go back to your experiences go back to recollect all the good prabha tejas paurusha gandha rasa no there are so many siddha siddhi so many different experiences keep thinking about all of them through me mam anusmara and yuddhya cha continue to fight don't give up your duty continue your fight you can't give up your duty you have to be in the war right your duty your swadharma don't give up that swadharma because your prakriti is also me bhutana bhava udbhava karah tat visargah is also me that is karma sanjitah go get up and fight yuddhya cha mai arpita mano buddhi offer your mano buddhi towards me having given your entire mind body ahankara all your antakaranas mai arpita that's what even the seventh shloka seventh chapter begins right maya vesha mano you know, what's that uh, uh, what's the seventh shloka beginning uh, shraddha ji maya saktamana partha yogam yunjan madashraya okay so maya saktamana partha yogam yunjan madashraya that's the, so my arpita give up give up all your mano buddhi everything to me okay yudhya cha asamshayam mam eva eshyati 
without any doubt you will acquire me alone again what is him paramadha paramadhama that ultimate paramadhama is him right we have time to contemplate upon that also we will see more contemplation upon that little later right so let's quick let's quickly see the arobindo interpretation therefore at all times remember me and fight for if thy mind and thy understanding are always fixed on and given up unto me to me you shall surely come there is no doubt about it right asamshayam maameva aishyasi mai arpita mano buddhi maameva asamshayam aishyasi that's the conclusion right so we stop at these seven shlokas and uh, we continue from the eighth shloka in the next session next saturday uh, Uh, we can conclude, right? Shraddhaji, Vijay Ji, Shamaji. Ji, Bhattaji, it was a really wonderful session. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's conclude on the reverse count of three. Thanks again for joining. And tomorrow, in our daily Bhagavad Gita recitation, we continue with chapters one and two. So please do join us in the Bhagavad Gita chanting. And next Saturday, we have more from shloka number eight of eight. So eight point eight is a very important shloka. 7.7, 8.8, 9.9. They are all amazing shlokas. Make note, right? So we continue from yes. 8.8. One of the interesting thing I right. Next we talk about Omkara, which is also eight gold. There is eight parts to Omkara. We'll see some contemplation on that. So eight is a very important number. We keep hearing more and more about it. <laughs> and the rest we conclude now on the reverse count of three. Thanks everyone for joining. Hope to see you all next week. Uh, three, two. वन नमस्ते वासुदेवाय प्रियसा मे प्रियोत्तम समस्त गुण संपूर्ण निर्दोषानंददायिने मुकोपि यत्प्रसादेना मुकुंदशयनायते राजराजायते रिक्तो राघवेन्द्रम समाश्रयं हैव अ ब्यूटीफुल वीकेंड एवरीवन जय श्री कृष्ण जय श्री कृष्ण